Oh, sugar honey ice tea. It's the EAC show. Today, and our first topic is going to be Duke, Duke versus North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And man, listen, the Duke versus North Carolina game was it was insane. It was nutty. I mean, sorry for North Carolina fans out there, but you, I mean, you played an amazing game for 41 minutes of the game. And literally, you just decide to blow it at like the end of the game. Like it was crazy, Cameron. Like tell me, tell me, what did you really think about that game that night? Yeah, it's a shame because you know that that's the kind of rivalry where you throw the record books out. Obviously, when those two teams play, and UNC having a down year, being ten and twelve before going into that game, mm -hmm. you feel that it was a home game and they really needed it. Especially you know Roy Williams. Having, yeah, he's really struggling. He's yeah, taking it hard this year, man. It's bad. Real hard. A couple weeks ago saying he might die before they're good again. Him coming out and saying that. So, you know, it was a game that they looked like they needed. But I actually I started watching it when around you watched it, like around the last five or ten minutes uh, of the second half before it went into OT. And, you know, just the biggest thing I got out of it was the two players, Trey Jones for Duke and Cole Anthony out of UNC, just watching them go back and forth. They each dropped, like, I think 24 and 28, respectively. But seeing them go back and forth, it felt like they, they were the only two that were scoring. Like, I got to be honest with you, because every, every game or every, um, like, big moment has its sugar honey iced tea moment. And everybody, if you don't know what sugar honey iced tea is, go Google it and we'll figure it out. So the sugar honey iced tea moment was when Trey Jones was at the line and mm -hmm. literally... <laughs> he threw the ball off the backboard. It was a got dime. It back. yeah, it was a <laughs> he dime. threw it off, off the backboard, got it back, shot it, tied the game. All right, we're going to overtime. Like, literally, oh, my God. It was so, like, it was crazy. It was nutty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And then for him to do what he did in overtime, miss that shot and get the put back in for and the guy got the put back in for Duke is just, oh, my God, it was crazy. Yeah, it, it was strange to watch because he balled out. And among all the shots he took and made, he had about two or three air balls in the last five minutes of the game and in overtime, it just so happens that last air ball, there was just a man wait ready to catch it and put it right back up as the as the clock hit. So all day in Chapel Hill, I'm in North Carolina. And, I mean, at the Carolina Coffee Shop, shout out to them. They are an immaculate place. If you're ever in Chapel Hill, this is free promo for the Carolina Coffee Shop. Go check them out. Amazing food, pancakes, coffee, you name it. It was delicious. So I'm sitting there. I'm in Chapel Hill. And... Carolina all over the place. Like, if you had a Duke shirt on, you were getting murdered. Baby blue all over. Right? <laughs> Baby blue all the way, you know? So, I'm at the camp, and my daughter has a scrimmage, and it's literally at the same time that the game is on. So, so you at, didn't catch much of your daughter is what you're saying. No, no, no. I watched my daughter. <laughs> UNC Duke, you, you kiss my you-know-what. I'm watching my daughter play, you know what I mean? I only get to see those eyes one lifetime. So, watching it, watching her play. And um, the game is literally going into the same time that they're ending that scrimmage on the field. So my daughter's on the field, and we're literally on the second deck. If you ever get a chance to look at Dorrance Field, Dorrance Field, the coach's offices oversee the field. So we're literally on the second deck while all the players are on the field and the coaches are on the sideline watching the players play. And we're watching the game from outside of the, the offices, because it's all glass, you can see inside the offices and all the TVs have the game on ESPN. So we're watching the end of the game. And um, obviously that incident where everybody thought it was a foul. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. They called Duke ball. Duke gets the ball. Um, Trey misses the, uh, the free throw. The guy gets the put back in. And the people on the field that were actually observing the soccer game didn't know what was going on. They were getting on delay. I am over the terrace. See, overseeing the field, mm -hmm. and I, I literally yell out, Duke won! <laughs> and everybody goes dead silent. I swear this is a true story. Everybody goes dead silent. My daughter, who's on the field, turns around and tells her teammates, that's my dad. Just like that. It Just literally, just like that. It happened just like that. That is my introduction to... North Carolina and the people of North Carolina was introducing the fact that North Carolina took an L to Duke in the last seconds of that game. Yeah, you screamed the D word. That that's not good there, man. Oh uh, man, I was just trying to put people on. I didn't know whether they had access to the I found that they had access to the game afterwards, yeah. but I didn't know, you know what I mean? So I kind of played spoiler 
thinking like I'm doing them a favor or in all actuality I'm not. They were going to find out regardless, so it's better off it comes from you, someone who who's going to get on the next flight to Florida anyway. I mean, that's really a true rivalry, though. That game is crazy. I mean, like, literally, you don't understand. Like, the whole town's, like, literally just, like, they just can't really stand each other. It's a real, real rivalry, Duke versus North Carolina. Yep. And um, the game didn't disappoint at all. It no. didn't, it didn't. I'm so looking forward to March Madness right now because if, if, if even if North Carolina is playing that bad this season – and they can make a game like that, imagine what March Madness is going to do. It's been a crazy year regardless, all these ranked teams going down. And just speaking of Duke, North Carolina, it's funny that UNC is having such a bad year because I was literally talking to a buddy before this year started, and he's from the, the area, the North Carolina, like Chapel Hill, that, that tri-campus uh, area. And he was saying every year it doesn't matter which one of these teams are having a bad year. If they can win that game, they have those bragging rights. And whenever you go to the barber shop, whenever you go to the store, like you get love from the fans no matter how bad the year has been. If you beat Duke, if you beat North Carolina, you're set for that I year. I mean, I feel I feel sorry for North Carolina because in all actuality, if you have that good of a game for forty something minutes and you still can't just 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 end just end the season. Like literally. Let the players let the players just like I mean, I know they're gonna keep fighting and Carolina fans you should, but and keep cheering your team because you guys are faithful. But like I mean, damn, they can't catch a break. Nah, fold it up. And, and I feel bad for that Cole Anthony Hickett kid. He, he's a baller, so I just feel like the rest of the year he's just playing for his draft stock. Right. You know? Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Mm-hmm.